physical therapist on the internet. Hello, folks. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Hey, I'm Chris, the pharmacist. And I'm exactly one half the Bob and Brad channel. However, today Bob is taking a little break. He's at home doing some studying for some new videos that we need some good information on. But we've got Chris here today. He's done an incredible amount of research. He's got great information. Uh, and what we're going to talk about is wound care. Yep, wound care. Burns, cuts, even bad wounds that you may yeah, see in like the hospital. Ulcers. That's exactly right. And uh, also, the treatment for this is so interesting because it's so simple, and it's been around for thousands, thousands of years, years. Yep. and you can go to the store and buy it off the shelf. And, well, not exactly. Not but exactly. Yeah, pretty close. I mean... He'll tell us all about it. So should we get on? Oh, we do have a giveaway. Yeah, we do have a giveaway. And it's exciting. This is our biggest giveaway. It's a sleep ovation, sleep ovation mattress. And uh, let me tell you, it is a beauty. I've been sleeping on one for three years, and I'm very happy, except for when I have to get out of it. But, you know, life that's, is good after that. Worst part of this morning, right. right? So let's talk about this, Chris. Wound care. Yeah. And what... What are we talking about? Well, wound care and honey, actually, Brad. So that's the interesting concept. I mean, honey's been that's around. That's it? Honey. honey? Yep, short and sweet. But not you can't just go all bite off the no, store? No, yeah, shelf. and that, that's the interesting distinction is that when you look at when we're treating wounds specifically with honey, you want to use a medical-grade honey. Mm -hmm. This is not the stuff that you buy in the little honey bears at the grocery store <laughs> uh, that is very processed, vastly different. It's not the same as, say, raw honey so or, or even you know slightly processed or very processed honey. Um, so it's, it's a medical-grade honey. Mm -hmm. um, and the one that I'm most familiar with and what I've done basically the majority of the research with is, is Manuka honey, which actually comes from the Manuka tree, which is in New Zealand and also Australia. So happy to everybody that's down under in the Southern Hemisphere. So, but uh, that said, the bees that work with on the Manuka tree and do all their pollen and making their hives and, and creating this honey, sure. um, the Manuka plant's pollen uh, carries lots of large antimicrobial properties as well as antifungal properties. And so in the processing of the honey, which is kind of interesting itself, they make it medical grade. And what they do is they... The bees do? No, the bees don't. This is where people step in. <laughs> so they collect it from the bees who have done all the hard work. With the manuka trees, which... Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, just like how a bee is going to buzz around. They grab their pollen, they bring it back to the hive, and they create honeycomb and honey. And right, right. It's their fuel source and... and but it's important the manuka tree yeah, has that tree because you know and 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 we can probably even do another video about honey and raw honey and the aspects of that as well yep. and i think maybe we should or sure. we can touch on it maybe towards the end okay. um but with respect to wound care um, manuka honey very specifically, and they talk about the manuka factor, and you want the higher factor, like if you're buying it. And the product that I always recommend is actually Meta Honey. So that's, that's the, the name of it. That's the manufacturer that makes it. Um, and it's special, it, they process it so that it's medical grade, and so it's irradiated, so there's no impurities, bacterial properties, you know, just little bits and things that could cause a problem with wound care. Which you're talking, the biggest thing is creating an infection. I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, we're going to stop an infection. So right. basically, so it's one thing if we cut our hand uh, and, and we're, you know, it's kind of a bad laceration. I mean, you can probably just toss a little meta honey on there. So you would put it on the dressing, cover it up and let her go. And it's probably going to heal pretty quickly. You know, the wound care that I'm talking about is much more severe wounds. So, I mean, we're talking about like a diabetic foot ulcer, uh, maybe a first or second degree burn. Um, keeping in mind that, guys, if you are going to use meta honey for wound treatment, can't be allergic to bees, can't wow. be allergic to certain pollens. And with some of these more serious wounds, let's say a diabetic foot ulcer, you're going to want to make sure that you talk to your doctor about mm. medical guidance and or maybe even get together with a wound care clinic to make sure you're applying it right, making sure that you're observing the proper things with wound care management. Because obviously with some of these wounds, they can be very serious and then go sideways in a big hurry. But so I just want to clear it up with some people who haven't been in the diabetic field or in the, in the medical field, these wounds are open wounds. Open wounds. They're deep. They can be one to two inches deep. It's there, and they can take m months, literally, to heal. Yep. So uh, 
I this mean, is a, these yeah. are serious wounds. These are serious wounds that we're talking about. And, and if those of you have experienced some of these, maybe you already know what we're going to talk about. But uh, it's something that you're already going to have had doctor guidance with in many cases mm -hmm. because you've been on antibiotics, debridement, surgical debridement, I mean, which is where they're kind of pulling away to try and get the healthier tissue Taking forward. Taking the dead tissue exactly. off. Exactly. So yeah. okay, not to get overly gory. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's – this is serious stuff, folks. Um, so make sure that you're clear with your doctor. Make sure you're not allergic to bee pollens, honey, or any component of that, because obviously we don't want to make something worse. Sure. So that's the most important thing. But with respect to these types of wounds, and most of the, a lot of the evidence actually surrounds burns and diabetic ulcers. Okay. So those are the two that we'll focus on. But uh, first and second degree burns, it's an excellent choice. Um, and, and the reason that, it, and, and we'll speak just in the same generalizations with like a diabetic foot ulcer, for instance. Okay. Um, because really the principles of honey are a couple of different things. You want to talk about that it's moist healing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to talk about its pH. And, and so Acidic it's, level? Yeah, because mm -hmm. honey is naturally acidic. So... And that acidic environment specifically, and we'll just jump right in, is actually something that bacteria do not dig. <laughs> and sp so it, it's just not good for them. But it also provides a moist healing environment. It also provides natural debridement and natural anti-inflammatory activity. So uh, sometimes you think all that inflammation is good for wound healing, but it controls it a little bit more to allow for better healing. So, But it also keeps it moist. So when you apply the wound uh, apply it to a wound, whether you have to pack it in there or if you're going to apply it to something a little bit more topical. Mm -hmm. Usually you want gloves, so yep. wash your hands, soap and water, wash the wound area. Usually I recommend using a, a normal saline or you could use a, a dilute warm soapy water. Mm -hmm. Rinse well, pat, let the area dry first before you apply it to the wound. And then basically you'll basically squirt a measured amount of honey onto the wound itself. Or if it's a little deeper, you're going to want it to make sure that it covers the entire wound, depending upon the size of your wound. So you so want to get it in there. this honey, meta honey, after you, like you said, saline. Yep. Could you just use uh, like distilled water? Well, distilled water you could rinse with. But I mean, I think I would use normal saline specifically because it's naturally antimicrobial. And, and it also and that's flushes something you can away. easily get. You can buy it. wound wash. Uh, it's it's just a product it's over the relatively any cheap. pharmacy. Yeah. You can buy it online, Amazon. Sure. You know wherever you like. Yeah. So that's going to be the, an aspect that you will use to help to prep the wound. And so then, basically, you want to clean, uh, and then you put the honey directly on the wound. You can, but it's actually better to put it on the dressing itself. Okay. So, but sometimes when the wound is very deep. There's an applicator tip that you can place it in there. I mean, some of these wounds that people may have experienced are deep. I sure. Mean, like even mm -hmm. like an inch down into the skin yep. uh, with folds, and you want to make sure that it gets in there. But it's easiest to put it right on the gauze dressing yep. and then apply it to the wound. And then you want to tape it down with a gentle tape, so like a paper tape or a, a, like a uh, like a Nexcare pore tape by 3M type of thing that's breathable. It's got micro pores in right. it because you want good air transfer. And a lot of times this skin is already so broken down from the wound itself, we don't want to cause right. anything. You don't want to be using duct tape. You don't want to be using something as aggressive <laughs> as, say, a, a athletic uh, tape. That you, you know, yeah, oh, we're talking your language. You're talking your no, language. No. But no. A actually, physical therapists are all trained in wound care. I had training in it. I did not do it much once I got out in the field. So a lot of this stuff is making sense to me when I think back. Sure. But I think the paper tape you're talking about is something that it's – Relatively inexpensive, and you it's can inexpensive, just inexpensive. It's breathable. It, it doesn't. It's it's adhesive, but it's not going to damage the right. skin per se. So you could go online or to the pharmacy and ask for paper tape. Yep, gentle paper tape. Yep, and it, it's a really it's easy to work with. Yes. I, I've always enjoyed working with it. Comes off easy. It, yep. Everything's good yep. about it. Yep, it's very easy to use. It, it sticks. It comes, and, and more importantly, it comes off well. Yeah. So, but the other thing that you want to, honey, just like anybody that's ever had honey, it's sticky. Mm -hmm. So with that, the other thing you probably want to do is put an occlusive dressing, a covering over the gauze. Yep. Uh, and I, uh, just something, I'm a cheapskate, cellophane works, you know, saran wrap uh, works really well. So just kind of cut out the, uh, the same appreciable size, tape that over the wound. It'll just keep the honey from, you know, so if you're sitting around watching TV, you're not going to get honey on your, you know, if you accidentally... <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, you're just not going to yeah. make a mess. And, and then so, if the but a dog of, comes along and wants to lick it, then the, it, you won't. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't want to go there. But yes, I mean, at the same time, but the nice thing about being a clear dressing, and there's more expensive ones like Tegaderm, too, that you can use. It's mm-hmm. like, um, but to me, like I said, just you want something that's occlusive. Um, so you can, s- and it's clear, so you can see it. Uh-huh. So basically when that dressing fills up with the exudate from the wound, all the byproducts, sure. and we'll talk about more of that in a minute, um, that's time to change. So what do you do? You'll gently pull it off. You're going to wash the area out, and then you're going to start over. So with these wounds, um, early on, you'll probably see more frequent dressing changes and more frequent applications of honey. But as time goes by, you're going to see that that dressing gets less and less messy, the integrity of it, and the wound starts to heal more. So you're going to, so the, that's how you know healing is taking place, less dressing changes. Well, what's the dressing again that you put uh, and just put the honey it's on. going to be a sterile gauze. Um, I always like a non-stick gauze, too, because the wound itself and, and the material that you're using, it's still going to be absorbent. And some people may even put another layer of gauze over it sure. to help to drain, yep. depending upon the type of wound that it is. And that's one of the things we should probably kind of interject here. Um, one of the concepts of why honey works so well is it's got a high sugar content. So what it does is it draws fluid from the inside your body and the wound to the honey where it absorbs that. And so that when it eventually gets saturated, that's another sign, and you'll see that in your gauze. That means you're going to have to change. You've got a dirty dressing, basically, at that point. So I know I mentioned we were talking about this. I didn't know if we wanted to mention it. I was thinking that. But that, that high sugar content draws Yeah, it works by osmosis. osmosis. And so what are you going from, you know, basically a low to high concentration. So it it's basically creates a natural pump, so to speak, and it brings water into the honey. And so what that does from an antibacterial principle is it takes water away from bacteria. Water is important for bacteria to survive and proliferate or, sure. or procreate. Right. And so if we can eliminate the ability for that bacteria to try and thrive, you know, you're going to help that your body's natural immune system fight that and, and begin to heal faster. So that's one of the reasons why it works. So yeah, this is just one of the natural it's things that a, happens. It's a natural thing because of the honey and why it's so effective. Yep. And it's been used for thousands of years. Along with that, the pH of the honey is slightly acidic. The bacteria don't like that yeah. either. Mm-hmm. To date, we know of no antimicrobial resistance with honey. Oh, so, really? I mean, we're talking about some of the big bugs. So we're talking like MRSA. We're talking Klebsiella. We're talking, these are big, long words, but just types of bacteria that they don't like, uh, C. diff, all very serious infections right. that are just not right. good. Yep. And we found that so far, uh, honey is standing up to the test. And I think it's probably the environment that it creates for it. So it's pulling water away from bacteria. It's acidic. So yep. those are just two things that bacteria do not like. Sure. And so as a result of that, so with, with frequent wound changes, doctor's guidance, yep. uh, and, you know, uh, you're going to have, and they've shown that even diabetic foot ulcers can heal within four weeks. So wow. when you talk about, you're talking about something that with, you know, wound vax, antibiotics, uh, colloidal silver, you know, just a lot of different things, maybe slower with healing. So sometimes it's appropriate. So Chris was mentioning all these things. Maybe if you're not in the medical field, you wouldn't know about, but wound vax are very complicated. I've worked with them. There's literally a little vacuum cleaner that sits on the side of your waist, usually you clip it there, and then that other, the, the silver. Yep. It's an antibiotic. Yeah, yeah. All, all these high-end, Silver expensive things. And then we got honey is standing <laughs> up to the test. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's been around forever, and it seems to work. And it doesn't work for everything. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's always good to have medical guidance with this. Sure. And, I mean, and if you see it going sideways, you see more redness, fever develop, pain, it's calling your doctor right away. Because, obviously, when these wounds get uh. away from us, it can be a very serious right, thing, right. but I, I think realistically, it has a lot of lot of strong aspects to promote quicker, safer, faster healing. So, would it be appropriate if you you watch this video and you have a wound and you're not being using any honey? I mean, ask your doctor is is this honey treatment? Yeah, uh, yeah let's say you know? yeah, let's say you spilled some coffee on your hand, yep. and you got a, we'll call it a first or a second, I mean, it could be easily a second degree burn, so you get that nice blister. Yeah. You know, I mean, one, I mean, with wound care, you never want to pop that blister, you want to leave that as a natural band-aid in place, but sure. eventually that blister is going to 
naturally pop. And so at that point, it's appropriate to use the honey to allow it to heal more quickly. Sure. And they show it speeds up the healing time by a few days. So, or even weeks if it's a more severe infection. But one of the unique aspects, again, with the acidity of the honey is um, when these really nasty wounds occur, uh, they create a kind of a slimy barrier. And once the wound has had that, it's, it's very, very difficult to treat. Honey doesn't allow that to happen sure. because of the acidity. And so uh, it debrides that. It pulls that stuff away. Yep. And not like in a painful way, but it just breaks it up. Yep. And because of the natural anti-inflammatory aspects of the honey, it allows the healthier tissue to develop and heal. Yep. So it, it's really, it's, it's fascinating stuff how it works. So yep. again, it would be, I'd want you to use a medical grade honey, the one that I'm most you know, familiar with is the brand Meta Honey. Yep. Um, so I think it's an excellent product, but there's other types of medical grade honeys out there that are perfectly acceptable to use as well. Boy, I, I am excited about this. I mean, I, I'm glad. Yeah. I, I'm grateful, Chris. Yeah. L seriously. But also we talked about some other benefits of honey, which we decided to put it into another video yep. uh, down the line, but we're talking about some cough suppressive yeah, properties. Yeah, honey itself. Now this is where we kind of change gears because I mean, meta honey. I mean, we would be going over to maybe like the raw honeys and the less processed honeys. And sure. I think that you know, just something as simple as a cough. I mean, as long as you you can't use it in kids under the age of one. Yeah. So that can cause botulism. So we want to be super careful with that. Right. So, uh, so no babies under the age of one. Yep. No honey ever. Um, but it's just basically the digestive tracts have not been able to handle the spores from botulism. Right. But you're saying that honey was better than some cough? Dextromethorphan. So that's which is which would be the chief ingredient in, say, Robitussin, Vix, Delsum, uh, Mucinex yeah. DM. So it's a commonly used cough suppressant that's every pharmacist. But don't tell Mary. We'll get a whole video. Yeah, that, we'll, we're working on that. But that I mean, focuses on But this. it will actually stop a cough. It'll yeah. stop a sore throat. Uh, Heart health, cholesterol health. So it's 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 some interesting yeah. stuff. So we'll definitely do another it's video. A good uh, good natural healing natural substance. So okay, Chris, I appreciate everything you've done for us today and really opened up some uh, avenues and some information. So thank you very much for uh, watching and uh, good luck with wound healing. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.